Exodus chapter 33 is where we're going to go very quickly. If you would grab your Bibles, Exodus chapter number 33. Exodus chapter number 33. Exodus chapter 33. And for the sake of time, I would have read in context verses 12 through 17. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I would have read in context 12 through 17. But let me focus your attention on two verses. Verse 14 says, and he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Verse 17 says, and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Look at somebody real quick and just speak life into them and say, God said he will do this thing. Amen. Find somebody else and just tell them, say, neighbor, he will do this thing. If you believe it, come on, clap your hands with all your might and tell God, thank you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Beloved, I had the opportunity to, as we entered into the threshold of this year, I had the opportunity um, to share in services with some of our other churches here in the jurisdiction. And uh, one of the things that uh, I had the opportunity to experience was a phrase or a theme that uh, was adopted coming into the new year that I have personally taken on, uh, and that simply says uh, securing the presence of God, securing the presence of God. Why is that important to us is because we have to understand that no matter what we do, no matter where we go, if the presence of God is not with us or is not there, I don't want to go. I don't want to be there because it is important for us to understand that where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so when we find that, when, uh, when we find ourselves, rather, in some of the most difficult places as we may find ourselves today, amen, uh, God creates a situation to where we would pull, amen, on him, that we would invoke his presence to be in the situation that we are in. I said this not too long ago, is that when God reveals himself to us, he doesn't do that in a way to where it is meant to destroy us or to calls us to be down and depressed. But God says, listen, I create a situation because I really want my people to know who I am. Here's the disclaimer. The disclaimer is, is that I will not be the same God to this person that I may be to that person. Amen. You may need God to do one thing while another person may need God to do something else. Regardless of what it is you need God to do, he said he would do it. That means that if you are sick in your body, that means that if you're going through uh, terrible times, you're going through a storm, you're going through a test, whatever you need God to do, he said he will do it. What he's looking for is that what you as the believer will do when you find yourself in those situations. Will you throw up your hands and say, God, I quit? Will you throw in the towel and say, God, I don't want to serve you anymore? Or will you look to God as to who he is and find out how God can begin to move? move in the midst of your situation, and then when you see him moving in your situation, give God glory, because if it had not been for him doing what he did, you know that there would have been no way out. That's why God creates, amen, a situation that he might provide revelation. Look at somebody and say, he gives situation for revelation. That's how, amen, some of us, amen, understand who God is. That's how we can open up our mouth and say that he is El Shaddai because he's created a situation that he would reveal to us that he is God Almighty. That's how we can open up our mouth and say that he is El Elyon because he created a situation that he might reveal to us that he is the God Most High. That's why we can open up our mouth and say that he is Jehovah Jireh because he created a situation, amen, that he might provide revelation 
foundation to know that he will provide for us. That's how we know when we're sick in our body that he is Jehovah Rapha because he created a situation, amen, for revelation to say that he is our healer. I don't know, amen, what he is to you, amen, but he is my everything. I don't know what he is to you, amen, when my back was against the wall, he was, amen, my way out. I don't know what he was, amen, to you, amen, but when I look to him, I understand that he is my strength, that he is my everything. He is my provider. I believe that it said it's something like this, that he can be a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He is my battle axe. He is the lion of Judah. Amen. Amen. Whatever we need him to be, he is able to be. Amen. As we look in the word, we find that there are all kind of names, uh, amen, that have been created or rather that's been presented for us to understand who God is. Uh, amen. And I hear bishops say this all the time. Amen. It's one thing for us to get up here or get to get wherever we are in our personal time and quote what it says in the word. But it's something about the personal experience of God that brings forth new meaning. Amen. That's when people can look at you and they know, amen, that folk have scandalized your name and see that you came out all right. They can glorify the same God that you glorify because if God didn't allow you to die in that situation, surely, amen, you give them hope to know that when it's my turn, God will be able. He will be able to provide it. Amen. When we look, amen, at this text, amen, there's one word that I want, amen, to bring out to your attention. Amen. That word is secure. Amen. When we look at that word secure, that word secure simply means, amen, to trust. Amen. To trust in, to have confidence in, amen, this most holy God. Amen. It makes no sense for us, amen, to worship this God if we can't, amen, put trust in him. Amen. It makes no sense for us to believe that God will heal if we can't put trust in him. Amen. He's looking to us to believe that God will, amen, provide, or that we will rather believe that he will provide, amen, whatever we may need. Amen. When we look, amen, to him, the word of God ought to come back to our remembrance where it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Sometimes we look for the treasures of the world and then we try to put God in it. Amen. How many know that we got to put God first. Amen. We got to ensure that we acknowledge him first. Amen. Because everything that we see with our eyes in this natural world may not be good for us. Amen. Some things that we see in this natural world or we experience in this natural world may not be healthy for us. Amen. We got to learn how to seek him first and his righteousness. God, if it's your will, I want to be there. And God, if you tell me to go, I'll go. If you tell me to say it, I'll say it. But I don't want to do anything out of your will. Why? Because I heard a songwriter say that the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. And so I just came by just to encourage some people today. Amen. That you got to remain in his will. As a matter of fact, we talked about it in Sunday school today. Amen. We talked about it. Amen. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that everything that we do, it pleases God. Sometimes we will never understand why things happen the way that they do. As a matter of fact, when we looked at one example, we looked at Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Amen. Sometimes people don't understand. Amen. When we're burdened down and we're heavy. Amen. With the weight of this world. Amen. Can I just put a plug in the, and make it personal? I know that we're going through. And I know that, amen, the loss, amen, of our dear sister weighs heavy on our shoulder. Amen. And sometimes we may find ourselves so weighted that the only thing we can open up our mouth, Sister Wofford, and say, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Amen. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, if you would just continue to press on, if you will continue to press through, if you will continue to persevere, amen, there's getting ready to come a nevertheless. And when that nevertheless come, I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, amen, that's the time when God is getting ready to do it. Why Jesus said, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, 
but thy will be done. And so I just came by to let you know, amen, that God is getting ready to do, amen, a thing. Amen. When we look at our text, we find that in our text, amen, here is the people of God, amen, now waiting for Moses to come back down the mountain. Amen. While Moses is up having a conversation with God, amen, here now the people of God are down there getting ready to make the wrong choice. Amen. They were waiting for Moses, and it would be suggestive to say that they were waiting for a long time. Amen. That they began to grow weary. Amen. They grew so weary that they looked at Aaron and said, look, I don't know what happened to Moses. Amen. But can you build us a God? Amen. Because we need somebody that we can serve. Amen. We need somebody that we can look to. Amen. And what bothered me with the text, amen, was here they were in close proximity as to where God and Moses was. But yet still they were looking, amen, to the things of this world, amen, to provide them comfort and to provide them peace. Amen. Can I put this plug in here? Amen. Some of the things that we may turn to. Amen. Some of the things that the enemy may throw in our way. I just came to let you know that those things are not going to work. Amen. They may erect themselves now. Amen. But they're not going to last long. Amen. Why? Because God is a jealous God. And he said in his word that there shall be no other God before me. Amen. When you understand who God is in your life, it doesn't matter what is erected in your life. Amen. You got to understand that if God said wait, then I got to wait until my change come. If God said move, amen, I'm going to move when he says move. If he says speak, then I'm going to speak when he says speak. But if God doesn't say anything, amen, look at somebody and say, I'm going to stand still. I'm going to stand ye therefore, amen, having on all of my garments. I'm going to stand ye therefore, knowing that when God moves, he's getting ready to move and it's getting ready to be good. Look at somebody and say, it's going to be good. The Bible said that here they looked at Aaron and said, Aaron, build us a God. Amen. Aaron then looked at the people and said, all of the gold, amen, that's in your ear, amen, take it and bring it to me. Amen. Because we want to make an image, amen, that represents God. Amen. The Bible said, amen, that they took all the gold earrings out of their ears. They brought it together, melted it up, and then they developed, amen, a golden calf. Amen. While God was having a conversation, amen with Moses. Amen. Here they're down here now looking to another God. Amen. Here is a God who has brought them out of Egypt. Here is a God that has now brought them out of a place of captivity. Amen. But yet it's so easy, amen, for the enemy to get into our minds and cause us, amen, to look to another help. Amen. How many know that there is no other help but the helper, amen, himself? That's why it's important for us to look to the hills from which cometh our help. Why? Because all of our help cometh from the Lord. Amen. The Bible said that now here they didn't build this golden calf. Amen. And begin, amen, to worship, if you will, this golden calf. And in the midst of them now worshiping and turning, amen, themselves to this God. Amen. God, amen, had a conversation with Moses and said, Moses, I'm getting ready to release you and send you back down to these people because they're out of control. Amen. They're starting to look to a God that can't do nothing for them. Them. Amen. They forgot, amen, who I am. Amen. They forgot that I am, amen, that I am. And so the Bible said that here comes Moses, amen, down now the mountain, amen, to the people of God and said, look, now I don't know what y'all are doing, amen, but this is not the way. I don't know what it is that you all are doing, amen, but this is not how God, amen, wants us to be. And so the Bible said, amen, that here now God's wrath was against the children of Israel. Amen. The wrath was against against God. Can I put, I mean, uh, God's children. Huh? Can I put this plug in here for you? Huh? Amen. I don't care where you may be in life. Huh? Amen. If you found yourself turning and looking to someone else, huh? looking to something else, huh? amen, there is still, amen, a chance for you to get it right. Huh? Amen. I know, amen, some of us may depend, amen, on alcohol. Huh? Amen. Some of us may depend on other substances, huh? amen, to make it or to get us through, amen, a difficult time. Huh? Amen. But I came to encourage somebody to Day. Amen. That if you would just turn, amen, from those things and put your eyes back on our first love. Amen. How many know that he'll do, amen, that thing? Amen. You don't have to worry about sex. Amen. And the addiction of sex or the addiction, addiction of drugs or the addiction of alcohol or all of these forms of the world, amen, that may come to cause us to cling to, uh, to these things. But God said, you can trust me. Amen. You can depend on me. Because 
because if my word goes out, amen, my word is not going to return unto me void. But that very thing that I set for it to accomplish, it will accomplish. Amen. You might not be healed yet, but look at somebody and say, the word's coming. Amen. You might not be delivered yet, but it's coming. Amen. You might not be out yet, but it's coming. Your children may be running amok, but it's coming. Amen. Your family members might not be saved, but it's coming. Look at somebody and say, God said he will. He will do a thing. Amen. The Bible said that now Moses is talking to them and trying to show them the error of their ways. But I need you to understand the attitude of God. Amen. This is what sin does, amen, in our lives. When we have it in our lives, this is what sin does to our relationship and our connection with God. Amen. It tells, uh, tells God that we don't want him anymore. Amen. That we don't want to depend and trust in him anymore. And so the Bible said that God God said, amen, listen, I'm not getting ready to go with y'all nowhere. Why? Because evil and goodness cannot be in the same place. If they want to serve this God, then let them serve that God. Amen. They, they can't serve me. I'm not getting ready to go, amen, with them. But here's why I have assurance in knowing, amen, that God will do a thing. Look at somebody and say, somebody prayed for me. Amen. Y'all didn't say it loud. I said, tell somebody, somebody prayed for me. Amen. I'm so glad for those church mothers that prayed for me. I'm so glad for those missionaries that prayed for me. I'm so glad for grandmama and them that prayed for me. I'm so glad for NAM, amen, that prayed for me. Because if it had not been for the prayers of the righteous, amen, God would not be able to avail much. But because the prayers of the people went up to God, amen, oh, God help me me today. He knew where you were going to be in 2018. He knew that you were going to be here, amen, heavy in your hearts. He knew that you were going to be here going through in life situation. And he knew that you needed a word, amen, from the Lord. And the word for the house today is I will, amen, do that thing. God help me today. The Bible said that Moses began to turn his face and pray to God, begin to plead and intercede, and intercede rather, amen, on behalf of the children of God. Why? because he didn't want to go anywhere without the presence of God. Amen. God help me today. And then all of a sudden, as Moses began to pray, and that's the word I want to leave for you. It may seem like you're all by yourself. It may seem like God is not answering, amen, your prayers. It may seem like tears are just flowing down your face, and they can't stop. I came by to let you know that God, amen, even though his wrath, amen, may, again, may, may be against, amen, your sinful nature. Amen. May have been against our choices. Look at somebody and say, God is getting ready to change his mind. Boy, because we serve a God that shall not lie. Amen. If God said it, amen, how many know that we believe it and that settles it? The Bible said that here Moses now, amen, begin to pray and plead. And then all of a sudden, amen, where God said he was going to send an angel to go with them. Amen. God himself looked, amen, in the verse 14 and said, and he said, my presence shall go with thee. And not only will my presence go with thee, amen, you're going to be able to walk man of God. Amen. You're going to be able to walk woman of God. Amen. With certainty. Amen. You're going to be able to walk with assurance. You're going to be able to walk in confidence. Why? Because as I go with you, I'm going to give you rest. As you walk through this difficult time, I'm going to give you rest. As you are, amen, hurting in your body, I'm going to give you rest. Amen. I heard the word say, they that wait upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. He shall renew their strength. Is there anybody in here that needs the presence of God to go with you? Amen. I need you to lift your hands and say, Lord, come with me. I need you more than ever. I need you not to turn your face away from me. I need you to keep your presence with me because where I'm getting ready to go, I know the enemy has a trick and I know the enemy has a plan, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. When I begin to walk, even though I was crying yesterday, and as a matter of fact, tears may be still running down my face. I have assurance that God will do it. Why? Because his word, amen, will not return unto him void. But it's getting ready to accomplish it. Look at somebody and say, God's getting ready to do it. 
And so uh, the Bible said uh, that he said, my presence uh, shall go with thee, uh, and I will give the rest. Uh, verse 15 says, and he said unto him, uh, amen, if thy presence go not with me, uh, carry, us, uh, uh, carry us up not hence. Uh, amen, for wherein shall it be known here uh, that I and thy people uh, have found grace in thy sight? Uh, is it not in that thou goest with us? Uh, so shall we be separated. Uh, I and thy people uh, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Uh, and watch what God says now. Uh, amen to Moses after intercession. Uh, the Bible says, and the Lord said unto Moses, uh, I will do this thing. Uh, amen. Look at somebody and say, hold on just a little while longer. Uh, amen. Look at somebody and tell them, say, don't you throw in the towel now. Uh, amen. Don't you quit now. Uh, I know the pain seems some, sometimes unbearable. Uh, amen. But don't you throw in the towel. Uh, amen. Because God is not through with you. Uh, I know you all been, been waiting for a long time uh, for God to move on your behalf. Uh, but I, can I give you a secret? Uh, as long as God has given a word. Uh, amen. You can stand on that word. Uh, amen. Can I call on a witness? Let me call on a witness. The Bible said, amen, that Jesus, amen, was in a place with Peter. God help me today. Amen. They were on a ship together. And the Bible said that they had toiled all night long. Amen. And did not catch anything. God help me today. And the Bible said that after Jesus, amen, preached to the multitude, he looked back at Peter and gave Peter a word. Is anybody in this house today, amen, that's standing on a word. Amen. It may not have come to pass yet. Amen. But I'm standing on a word. It may not have been fulfilled yet, but I'm standing on a word. In other words, I came to tell somebody that it might have, you might have storm clouds in your life right now, but the sun is getting ready to shine. You might be going through a storm right now. Amen. But the storm won't last always. Amen. You might be feeling heavy in your heart. Amen. But the comforter is coming. Amen. After a while. I don't know who I came to talk to. Amen. But I need you to stand on the word. I need you to stand on the word of God. Amen. I need you to stand on the promises of God. Amen. Because the promises of God are yea and amen. God help me today. So the Bible said he looked at Peter and gave Peter a word. Amen. You know how we do. Amen. When God says the thing, amen, we look at our natural sense and we say, Lord, I've toiled all night long. I didn't catch anything. But here you are telling me to throw my net out a little deeper? God said, I need you to trust me. I need you to believe in me because what I know, amen, you may not know. What I can see, you may not be able to see, but I just need you to act on the word. That's why it's important, Praise Cathedral, when somebody say, clap your hands and give God praise. You're not just giving God praise for the right here and now, but you're giving God praise for what's to come. You're giving God praise huh, as to what you know he's able to do. Huh? You're giving God praise huh, to let the devil know that he did not win. Huh? You're giving God praise huh, to know that what God is getting ready to do huh, is getting ready to blow your mind. Huh? Can I close my text? The Bible said uh, that when Peter launched out into the deep, uh, amen, because he understood God's word, uh, amen, he let himself down and said, you know what, it doesn't matter whether or not I complain today or not. Uh, if God told me to do a thing, I got to do it. Uh, the Bible said when he threw out his net uh, and the net began to sink, uh, amen, they began to pull uh, and they began to tug. Uh, and the more that they pulled uh, and the more that they tugged, uh, the more that began to fill their net. Uh, and so I don't know who I came to talk to. Amen. The more you throw out your net and the more you pull on the anointing of God, the more that God will put into your net. You think you can't handle it, but keep on pulling. You think it ain't going to happen. Keep on pulling it. You don't think that your children are going to be saved, but keep on pulling it. You don't think their life is going to change, but keep on pulling it. The Bible said that the more they pulled, amen, the greater the weight became in the net. Oh, God, help me to I need somebody to look at somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, greater is coming. Greater is on the way. Greater is on the way. I'm not talking about a house. I'm not talking about a car. But if you need more anointing, keep pulling on God. If you need more power, keep pulling on God. If you need more deliverance, keep pulling on God. If you need more, amen, strength in our fasting, keep pulling on
waiting on God. God, help me today. Why? Because the word says that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Can we take about 30 seconds? And I know you may have lost hope, but God wants to give it back to you today. Will you start pulling on God? Whatever you need him to do, start pulling on his power. Start pulling on his anointing. Start pulling on his presence because greater greater is coming 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 I said greater is coming greater is coming greater is coming greater is coming I said greater is coming I need somebody to catch that greater is coming greater is coming the more you pull the greater I'll show myself in your life the more you pull, the more you'll feel my anointing. The more you pull, the more those jokes will be destroyed. I hear greater. Woo! I hear greater. I hear greater. And so the Bible said that as they pulled, they had so much in their nets that the net broke. Not only did the net break, but the Bible said that the ship began to sink. Greater, God's getting ready to give you more than what you need. But he needs you to believe God for the little bit. Did y'all hear what I said? He's getting ready to give you greater than what you need. But he's looking for those that will believe him for the little bit. Here, after Moses began to talk to them and prayed on their behalf, he said to them, I will do this thing that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found favor and grace in thy sight. And watch this. And I know them by name. And I know them by name. Child of God, he knows you by name. He knows your troubles and your difficulties. But he's a God that is able, God help me, to move on your behalf. Why? Because he knows your name. He's looking for the person that will just trust him. Not turn to other sources that give us false help, provide false hope. But look to him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So that even if we made a choice, that turned us away from the true and living God. Know that the prayers that have gone before us, touch somebody and say, they're still valid. They're still valid. They're still valid. And they're valid for this reason, that God knew you needed a second chance. They're valid because he knew you needed a second chance. Simon, Simon, Satan desired to have you, that he may sift you as we, but I prayed for you. I prayed for you that your faith would fail not because I knew that you were going to fail along the way, but there was going to come a chance that you're going to need another chance with me. God said, I created an opportunity. Now, what are you going to do with it? 